Tom Leffler, I just had the conversation, we spoke about it with Jonathan Banks yeah. about the, everything what, what went down when Klitschko fought uh, Tyson Fury. And we are talking about Klitschko because yesterday's press conference and everything, the narrative, every time goes back to this fight. I mean, Tyson Fury was built by beating yeah, he was the what, first, one, first one to beat uh, legendary uh, Vladimir Klitschko. He had such a historic heavyweight championship run. Uh, Tyson Fury was the first one to uh, have beaten him uh, on that run. So there were a lot of factors involved that night. Uh, we just heard about it. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, you know, look, uh, you can't take anything away from uh, Fury. Uh, he did something that uh, nobody else had done uh, in that era, and uh, I think with that experience, I. I think he's going to take that experience and, and uh, take it into this uh, Deontay Wilder fight. It sounds like you, uh, you favorite on Saturday. It's 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 Tyson Fury. Well, it's hard to you know. Here's the thing. You know, Deontay Wilder has an eraser punch. He's got that right hand that can change a fight at any given time. We saw that with the Luis Ortiz fight. Uh, I think. Uh, Tyson Fury is a completely different fighter than anyone that uh, Wilder has fought before. Uh, he's not afraid of anyone. He's not intimidated of anyone. But he's not. Can you? Sorry for interrupting. But we all assuming that he's going to be close to he, what he was when he fought Vladimir Klitschko. Well, if he's close, do we know? If he's close to where he was with Vladimir, then uh, you know. Look, I, I would uh, say uh, Fury has a very good chance of winning that fight. Uh, in spite of uh, Deontay's uh, punching power, I think uh, Fury really, uh, especially with the work he did in Big Bear, now he's working with Freddie. Uh, like I said, he's not intimidated. You know, he fought Vladimir in Germany. He's fighting Deontay over here, even though this isn't Deontay's hometown. It's still, you know, he's fighting him in America. And uh, one thing about Tyson is uh, he'll never back down. So, um, you know, if he's close to where he was against Vladimir, uh, I, I give him a good shot of uh, winning that fight. And like he says, he likes he, he keeps reminding everyone he is a lineal heavyweight champion. So he beat uh, the guy that beat the guy. And uh, I think Vladimir still, if he, if he ever wanted to fight again, he could still beat, you know, pretty much everyone uh, that he wanted to. And he came very close to beating uh, Joshua. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's funny. When we were doing all the sparring partners for Vladimir's training camp, you know, Tyson Fury was there. He didn't spar with Vladimir, but he was there with Emmanuel Stewart. Emmanuel had pegged him as one of the future champions, which Emmanuel was right. When was it? Uh, that was a while ago, maybe, yeah. uh, I don't know, five, six years ago, something like that. So he did recognize the, in Tyson Fury the guy who can yeah. be the man. He's a, he, uh, he brought uh, Tyson specifically to Vladimir's training camp, wanted to show him how the heavyweight champion trained at the time. Uh, Vladimir always, uh, both Vladimir and Vitaly had a beautiful uh, setting up there in the Austrian Alps, at the, uh, right by uh, Kitzbühel. Going? In uh, Going, yeah, that's right, in Going, uh, Austria. Uh, the Stanglewood Hotel, one of the one of the best places I've ever uh, been to, and uh, why there was also there, correct? Sorry, why there was also in yeah. the training well, camp. Deontay Wilder was a sparring partner for uh, for Vladimir, and uh, I think he, Vladimir showed him, you know, the difference where they were at at that time. But uh, you know, Deontay, which was sorry for interrupting, but the timeline is important. I mean, Deontay was there. Could you remind? Uh, could you remember the date? How many years ago? I'd, I'd have to look back, but uh, it must have been when when uh, Vladimir was fighting a tall guy. Might maybe when he was fighting Marius Walk. Uh, it could have been. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, yeah, there was a, a big difference at that time. Uh, naturally, uh, Deontay didn't have the experience Vladimir had, and and that was the thing. The sparring partners uh, loved coming to. Uh, the Klitschko training camp because they learned so much, both from Vladimir, from Vitaly, not only in the ring but outside the ring, you know, just as how they carried themselves as a champion and the training methods and the training techniques. And they saw, okay, this is what these guys do as heavyweight champions. This is what I have to do to get to that level. And I think Deontay took a lot of experience from that. He's got the punching power, uh, uh, certainly uh, with all the knockouts that he has. Um, so I think uh, both Tyson Fury and Vladimir. Uh, learned a lot. Uh, Anthony Joshua had been in the camp also. Uh, we had Anthony Joshua as a sparring partner. So, uh, you know, the Klitschko era really uh, developed a lot of these guys now that are uh, that are champions. 
this is one of those 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 uh, things which we don't hear a lot. I appreciate it, Tom, reminding us. Behind the scenes with the, the Klitschko camp. Behind the scenes, I mean, you, you just mentioned Deontay Wilder, WBC champion. Yes. Uh, Tyson Fury, he didn't spar, but he was there. He was looking the right. war ethics. He was learning. Yeah. Vladimir Klitschko, yeah. Vitaly. I mean, who wasn't there? Anthony, <laughs> Anthony Joshua, like I said. Anthony Joshua. He, he was there, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you can name a who's who a heavyweight division and they were up there uh, training with uh, Jarrell Miller was up there as a sparring partner. Uh, like I said, you can go down the list. They're not talking a lot about it. Were there any knockouts? We don't know about it because uh, some of those guys are like, oh, I was there, I don't remember well. You know, the funny <laughs> thing is, Vladimir liked to show <laughs> the guys there that he, he liked was a heavyweight champion. He, he definitely uh, sparred pretty hard. Uh, Vitaly was one of, uh, one of those guys, a little bit more like you wanted to work on certain things, didn't care, you know, sometimes a sparring partner will get the better of you one day and then not the next day, but Vladimir always wanted to, to prove that he was the heavyweight champion, whether it was in a fight or in sparring, and so there's a lot of guys that uh, didn't last too long up there with, uh, with Vladimir, in fact, uh, Jonathan will probably tell you it's the more it's the most any out of any boxer I ever worked with we had the most sparring partners for Vladimir. Uh, usually the average between 10 and 12 sparring in partners one camp in one camp. Yeah, this is this is and, and with Guinness of them, Book of Records and a lot of them only lasted one week. Uh, some of them only lasted uh, you know two two sparring sessions. So um, yeah, there's a lot of stories uh, from up there. Uh, James Ali Bashir was up there, naturally Emmanuel Stewart was there, Fritz Stunig, uh, Vitaly's trainer, was up there, so uh, there's some legendary uh, legendary sparrings. But whatever happens in going stays in going. Yeah, it's on, it's on videotape. Uh, Dave Williams probably has the, the tapes of, uh, of that sparring, but uh, yeah, those are sparring sessions, like the Joshua sparring session, like the... Deontay Wilder's sparring sessions, you know, Jarrell Miller, I mean, those would be very interesting. I'm sure it would be interesting for a lot of people to go back and, uh, and look at those. But uh, uh, it just overall, it was a great experience. Every Klitschko fight, you know, whether they were fighting the big soccer stadiums in Germany, in Poland, when uh, Vitaly fought Adamak, yeah. that was in the brand new, uh, brand new uh, stadium in Wurzlaff. Uh, you know, when uh, Vladimir fought Povetkin in, in Moscow, uh, so many uh, legendary nights. When he fought David Hay at that terrible, uh, terrible rainy night in uh, Hamburg uh, Soccer Stadium, I remember that. I, I, <laughs> I got deathly ill during that, <laughs> that, uh, that fight, uh, just because it was windy and rainy. And, yeah, I remember one of them were, were wearing like, like a like a plastic. Uh, David Hay, I think. Yeah. Was wearing like a. Yeah. yeah. It was the Hay fight in Hamburg, and he was walking out to the ring. He had the plastic, yeah. and then we had the fights at Schalke. That was the covered stadium, and uh, RTL, the German broadcaster, they had the big fireworks display. If you can imagine this, Peter, they had the fireworks display in the stadium, that, and the fireworks would explode right underneath the roof. <laughs> Will not happen in the United States of America. So they, they I doubt it. it. They had it planned out. They had it planned out pretty good. The the whole uh, ring entrance. You know, they had the legendary uh, Klitschko ring entrances and RTL's production. HBO showed. Uh, Almost every fight from over there, uh, so it's uh, that was the Klitschko era uh, spanned for so long that, uh, like I said, there were so many uh, talented, all these uh, top ten, all these champions were uh, up there in the Klitschko training camps. Uh, about a week ago, and uh, I'm, I'm going I'm to finish because uh, thank you very much for your time. You're busy. The event is coming yeah, on December eighth. December eighth, Cecilia Breckus, the first uh, female champion ever to headline yeah. Yeah. HBO. And and uh, this would be one of my my questions for you afterwards. But now I want to ask you about one thing. It's uh, about a week ago. Yes. There was a there was a rumor, supposedly coming from uh, Vladimir's camp that maybe he's thinking about <laughs> going back. He issued like uh, denial. No, I'm not thinking about it. I am successful businessman. Your own personal opinion <laughs> about your friend. <laughs> I think everyone that knows Vladimir intimately in terms of having worked with him knows he could still beat 
you know, all these guys, or almost all these guys. You, you, right you, you, now, you believe so? I believe. Give him I ten believe. week training, and he goes and. If Vladimir has a full training camp. I think he beat the, these guys, but you know, he's the one in the ring. He's the yeah. one taking the punches. He's the one that got hit by that big uppercut by uh, Joshua. Uh, that he was stopped on his feet, not on the canvas uh, with. So, look, uh, you know, it's Vladimir's decision. We support him, whatever decision he makes. Um, you know, when, when you've done so many Klitschko fights in such, you know, so many different settings, so many, you know, big arenas, you know, he sold out Madison Square Garden. Uh, you know, they fought in uh, Las Vegas, uh, like I said, all the, all the European stadiums that they fought at. Uh, you know, it's hard to let that go, but uh, you got to respect his decision. I, I just saw Vladimir in Los Angeles about two weeks ago, and he looked the most relaxed, the, the happiest I've, I've seen him. Just uh, happy with what he's doing. He's got a lot of investments that he's working on, real estate investments. He owns one of the uh, highest rated boutique hotels. Uh, in Europe, it's based in uh, Kiev. It's the 11 Mirrors Hotel. I think it won the award for, you know, the best uh, boutique hotel. Uh, and so uh, he's really happy with, with what he's doing and, and he's probably happy that he doesn't have to get hit in the head anymore. <laughs> but you still see him, he was telling me that he still stays in shape, he still... Is he watching boxing? Uh, he watches guys like Usyk, uh, you know, mm -hmm. follow uh, Usyk naturally, who uh, Usyk has turned out to be one of the top guys in the sport of boxing, if not the top guy with all the guys that he beat this year. He's, he's got to be fighter of the year this year. Uh, yeah, no doubt. With his no three doubt. wins uh, that Usyk has, um, so he follows. Uh, he follows boxing. He, he doesn't really like to go to boxing events, but <laughs> but he follows it. And uh, you know, he's had uh, both Vladimir and Vitaly had so much uh, of an effect and inspiration for a lot of these guys out there that uh, you know. It's uh, you know that Klitschko era. The Klitschko name is going to live on for, for a long time. He's in uh, Vladimir is in the Guinness Book of World Records. Uh, Vitaly with his big comeback against Sam Peter. You know, being out of the ring for four years, coming back, getting his winning his title back by knockout in impressive fashion in Berlin, Germany. I mean, most guys if they're off for a year, they want tune-up fights. They want two, three yeah. tune-up fights, and then you know get into a competitive fight. And Vitaly didn't care. I mean, he, he has a lot in common with, uh, with Fury, he doesn't care, he didn't care where he fought, he didn't care who he fought, he wasn't intimidated. Vitaly once told me a story that, you know, he, he uh, when he was growing up on the military bases, that sometimes he got to a new military base and there were like guys surrounding him trying to test him, you know. <laughs> so he's like, look Tom, if I only have to fight one guy in the <laughs> ring, it's no problem for me. So, you know, that was, uh, that was an interesting story that uh, Vitaly really was one of those guys that wasn't afraid of anything and you see now as the mayor of Kiev uh, the battles that he has to go through you know it's, uh, it's probably a much tougher battle for him in politics everything that's going on between uh, Ukraine and Russia than, uh, than when he was in the ring as a heavyweight champion so you know so much uh, credit to uh, both Vladimir and Vitaly what they've accomplished and you see now you, know, you see the heavyweight division with uh, Fury and Deontay Wilder I mean these are the type of uh, fights that have come out of that Klitschko era and Anthony Joshua what he's doing you know selling out soccer stadiums it doesn't matter who Joshua fights yeah, sells sure. out every stadium in uh, in the UK so uh, you know it's, I think the heavyweight division is uh, definitely thriving and uh, yeah we'll all be excited to see that fight on, uh, on Saturday night.